Hey YouTube, so in this video today we are going to be changing a front differential on the Can-Am X3. Um, the reason why we know it's broken on this thing is I'll show you here in a few seconds. So to know if your differential is actually broken, um, why your four-wheel drive not, may not be engaging, um, is what you'll do here is you'll jack up the car, you know, in the middle so that your tires can hang free here. And you're going to want to put your vehicle in four-wheel drive and then you want to see if these tires will spin. And if they, they do, then that means obviously something's not working from the front to the rear. So the reason why I knew is because you can come back down here and you see the drive line right here. This is the drive line from your rear gear case all the way to the front differential right here. So you'll, what you'll do, you'll grab it, see if it will turn. And if it doesn't turn, then that means it's locked in. So your actuator is working. Um, and that means it's just not spinning your front tires there in the front. All right, so now you know if your differential is bad or not. Um, when it's in four wheel drive, it's, the drive line's locked in. It's not moving at all, but your front tires aren't rotating or you know rotating with the differential there. All right, we'll start to jack it up now. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be removing the tires. If you don't wanna damage your threads on your studs or lose your lug nuts, just go ahead and put them all on the ends and then you won't lose them. For this next part, we're going to be removing our steering knuckle. Um, we're gonna remove this bottom bolt first. It is a 15 millimeter. So that's what you'll need to remove that bottom bolt and we'll go ahead and do that next. So next thing we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be removing the bottom shock bolt. Keep the shock up and out of the way so we can pivot these arms up to be able to pull our, pull our uh, half shaft out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our shock out and then I just put a ratchet strap to hold this thing up while we take everything apart. I'm gonna ratchet that next, and then just to get it up. So you'll want to get this thing as level as you can with the transfer case there, or at least perpendicular, I guess you could say, um, in order to get your half shaft out or else it just will not slide out. Alrighty, so we're gonna do that next and take the half shaft out. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna undo this bolt right here and slide our main drive line off of the front differential case. So we're gonna do that next. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna undo the bolts right here that hold our transfer case in so that we can get our transfer case out and check and see what's broken inside of it. So next thing we're gonna be doing now that the front transfer case is out, we're gonna remove these bolts here and take a look inside. So we'll go ahead and do that next. Now that we got the cap removed, we will take a look of what's gone on inside here. So there's a lot of bulbs here. Looks like our pinion right there looks like it's still pretty good. If we rotate it there, there's no damages on it, any chips or anything like that. And with the main uh, gear part here, it looks like all the edges here are still actually pretty good. The teeth inside there are pretty good. It looks like these are your shims, I'd assume. So it looks like we will go ahead and uh, order us a new face cap and, and get some new parts coming so we can put this thing back together. 
So because my differential wasn't bad enough to replace the whole thing, I only had to replace pieces of it, which is really good. Um, and it wasn't very expensive. So I took the differential into my local mechanic and he told me what I needed to replace. So I replaced the lid there as well as the seal that goes around the lid. He also told me to, to replace the bearings on both sides just because there are gonna be shavings in there and you just don't want those to break later down the road. And then I replaced the seal right there. The screws were all still intact. Um, these screws, however, they were actually a super sheeted part. So they, they when I ordered them, they came as a different uh, bolt. Um, so we had to replace those obviously because they were all tore up. Uh, the shim was good and everything in there was good. I just cleaned it out really well. And the gear was good. Here's the other bearing for the other side right there. And then there's the other um, seal that goes on the outer side of it. And then here is the pinion right there. That was good. And this bearing right there had to replace. You do have to have a special tool to remove this in order to get your, your pinion out. Um, so I would recommend you taking it into a shop that has this special tool to be able to take it out because it is a pain in the butt to get out. And then there's also a seal that covers the, the back side of this there. Um, so that's all we really needed to replace. And we obviously torqued it down to spec here and everything and put new oil in it. And now we're gonna put it back in uh, the Can-Am. So all we really did is replace the bearings and the gasket or seal right there around the edge, as well as have to get some new bolts there for our, for our gear. Um, we, we did put a tap into the gear to make sure none of the threads inside this gear piece were uh, burred up or um, had any edges on it. It actually was pretty, um, I should say, burless. <laughs> and then you also have, this is your, actually your shim that goes right there. Um, but yeah, other than that, we just put new bearings in and put new seals. So this is the seal right there. We still gotta put the seal on the other side of this right there. Um, and once we get that on and everything put back together, we'll be able to put it back in and fill it full of gear oil and it'll be good to, to drive on. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the differential in, back into the carriage. So what you'll need to do next is you'll need to take this bolt off right here for the, um, the A-arm support there so you can get the differential back in. It's just a plate like this. All right, so I just took that off. And we're gonna put the differential in now. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our drive line to the back side of the differential there. So before you mount your differential, you're gonna to wanna to get your drive line in, you know, this one side here, and then we'll do the next side here in a sec. So get that in there first before we start bolting it down. So next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be putting this support bracket back on the upper A-arm there. So what we're gonna do next, before we put our axle in here, we're gonna go ahead and remove our fill plug and we're gonna put 17 ounces of gear oil in the front and then we'll put our axle in. Now that we got the gear oil in the gear case, we're gonna go ahead and put our mounting bolts to the frame that, that mount the transfer case to the frame. We're gonna do that next. So next you wanna connect your bottom ball joint to the bottom of the steering knuckle and then put your bolt in and that part's good. Next you wanna do is obviously jack the car up if it's not already jacked up um, to be able to connect your bottom shock mounting point. So we're gonna do that next.